from a base coat of Abaddon Black, paint a thick highlight of Incubi Darkness on all of the sharp edges. This paint is very similar to the black, so it's not that noticeable, but it's the first stage of generating the black color. In addition, a thinned version of this paint is painted on any areas where you want dot highlights. When you hold any black model under bright light, it'll kind of show you where these highlights are to go, um, but really put them where you think feels most accurate. A second thinner edge highlight then with Thunderhawk Blue, trying to remain within the previous highlight, so some of the Incubi Darkness is visible, but on some of the sharper areas, they're gonna overlap anyway. Um, just aim to keep this highlight as thin as possible, but covering the entirety of the model as the next highlights are a bit more refined. As previous, we're building up the point highlights on the carved areas of the armor. So this again is quite thin, dotted within the boundaries of the previous color. A second highlight then, even thinner, of Fenrisian Grey. You don't have to cover all of the edges with this, definitely the sharper edges and anywhere you can use the edge of the brush. Even with the edge of the brush though, sometimes the highlight's a bit too chunky and you can always refine it back with use of the Thunderhawk Blue. Paint the centre of the dot highlights now again with thin Fenrisian grey. Now pick out the very, very sharpest of corners using Blue Horror. You don't really need to pick up too many areas of this colour, but definitely the sharper areas to give it a noticeable contrast from the colour below. This then is the final colour of the point highlight as well, thin it right down because my blue hair in particular anyway is an old edge paint which is quite heavily pigmented and just thin it down as thin as you need to. Now glaze the entire model with a kind of a turquoisey green colour. I'm using very very thin Pteranon turquoise and it's thinned down with contrast medium. Um, just keep the paint flowing quite quickly so it doesn't particularly pool but acts more like a glaze over the entire area of armour.
you can finish the effect then with small dot highlights of both one gray on the sharpest corners. Um, this is a bit of an optional step, um, but on this particular model, there are a lot of rivets, so it's definitely noticeable if you pick out all the rivets in this color or potentially maybe using a silver. Paint the entirety of the red cape with Mephiston Red. Shade all of the recesses with thinned corn red. Shade the deeper recesses using Galvorback Red. For really deep areas like any tears, paint with Wildwood Contrast. Do a broad edge highlight of Evil Sun Scarlet, making most of the areas that are raised this colour, but leaving some of the central details with the Mephiston Red. Pick out thinner edge highlight then with Wild Rider Red. the finest edge highlight with Fire Dragon Bright. Pick out the sharpest corners with dot highlights of Dorn Yellow. Paint all of the leather areas, so in this case the boots and the belt with Rhinox Hide. Shade these areas with Null Noil. Pick out a first broad edge highlight using Doom Bull Brown. Pick out a second edge highlight with Scrag Brown. Now get back to filming normally and pick out a sharper edge highlight with Talarn Sand. Finish with dot highlights of Carrick Stone just on the sharpest edges. Paint all the silver areas, namely the buckle, the 
pendant around the neck and the blade of the sword with iron hand steel. I have a tendency now to use the air version of this paint just because I find without dilution games with metallics are quite thick. Uh, we can get the same thing just with the regular paint and just thin it a little bit with water. Shade these areas with non-oil. For the deeper recesses in the centre of the sword, I just went with the second layer of non-oil once the verse had dried to give the darker impression in the middle of the blade. For the design on the pendant, I picked it out using Black Templar. To be honest, the easier way of this is probably not to paint over it with the silver in the first place and just leave it black. Pick out the raised areas of the pendant then with iron hand steel just to finish the effect. Edge highlight all the metallic areas using Stormhole Silver. There's areas like the central depression on the blade that you can use the edge of the brush um, and for other areas just to make sure kind of almost the less is more, the smaller elements of silver will make the effects better. This goes doubly so for any scratches you put on the blade. Base paint all the gold areas on the sword with Retributor armor. Shade the gold areas using Gulliman Flesh Contrast. Edge highlight the gold with Liberator Gold. Once this had dried, it actually isn't all that noticeable, so I went with a second edge highlight with a 50-50 mix of Liberator Gold and Stormhole Silver. You could probably just go straight to this step if you want to save time, but you do get a nice effect using the two different gold highlight colours. Paint all the raised areas on the handle using Screamer Pink, just making sure the black remains in the deepest recesses. Edge highlight the wraps first with Pink Horror.
Tenor Edge highlight with the 50-50 mix of Pink Horror and Wraithbone. Base cut the horn that's on the shoulder using the shapti bone. Paint the majority of the upper portion of the horn with some easy desert, and in this case, I rotated the model just to make it easier to paint. Repeat this process in a smaller area using Mornfang Brown. Using a lot of vertical strokes will give you a kind of a jagged impression and a more bone like texture to the finish. Repeat one more time using Rhinox Hide, just the top portion of the horn. Edge highlight the raised ridge along the middle of the horn using Screaming Skull, as thin as you can manage it. Unfortunately in this there isn't a huge amount of definition so the edge of the brush probably won't work. Just take your time. And this is the finished result. If you like this video, please feel free to check out the channel where I have a lot of other painting tutorials and consider subscribing if you want to be kept up to date.